This year's garden beds were planted out at different times and I don't think I realized at the time how much squash and zucchini I planted in all the beds. So this is the week where I'm realizing exactly how much we planted. We have so much squash and zucchini being harvested and growing. So I'm gonna go through and show you all of the squash that's growing. We have a fun couple of projects this week dealing with Bermuda grass. Powdery mildew makes an appearance probably because we have so much squash and I show you my favorite ways of dealing with powdery mildew in the garden. This week I've also learned a lot about growing corn and I'm excited to share all of that with you. Stay tuned, lots of fun things in store. some powdery mildew on some of these leaves so I removed the affected leaves and now I am spraying with milk. In addition to using a milk solution you can also use a baking soda solution or sulfur spray to prevent and treat powdery mildew. If powdery mildew has been a problem in the past use it as a preventative otherwise once you spot it remove affected leaves and spray remaining plants about once a week. Lots of factors go into growing a successful ear of corn. Pollen from the tassels, the male part of the corn, needs to land on the silks, the female part of the corn. Tassels emerge from the top of the plant and then open to disperse pollen on the silks. Each individual silk is a potential kernel of corn. So if a silk doesn't receive a grain of pollen, no kernel will form in that space. So that explains why a lot of the corn I've grown in the past hasn't worked. Which the more corn you're growing, the easier it is for the ears to get pollinated, there's more pollen and they're more likely to get pollinated. I've dedicated an entire four by eight bed to this corn, hoping that I will get a good harvest. There are a few things you can do to improve pollination. You can hand pollinate by snapping off a tassel and wiping it on the silk so the pollen makes good contact with the silks. Sowing corn in blocks like I've done here rather than in rows also helps ensure pollination. You can see that there's a good thickness of the corn here. So hopefully there's some overlap with the tassels. This week it's also finally time to harvest the garlic.
just took care of some pesky Bermuda grass this week. Bermuda grass is pretty invasive here and this whole area was grass and so any spot that I missed with weed cloth, that's where I ended the weed cloth and that's where the Bermuda starts. So today I am going around and finding all those areas and putting weed cloth down so that the Bermuda won't grow. That's about all you can do is smother it unless you wanna use chemicals. Same thing here, the weed cloth ended and so then the Bermuda started. It's gonna kind of fill in these extra areas with more weed cloth. So I pulled back the bark and cut some weed cloth and then put it in with the staples here. That should take care of the Bermuda problem. I harvested the garlic out of this bed and the cantaloupe that I planted is really starting to take over. So I added this trellis, stuck it in the ground. I think I found this trellis at a, at a yard sale or something. So I wound the cantaloupe up and around this trellis. I found the cantaloupe is much happier climbing and I have a problem with roly polies and anything I leave on the ground, like fruit, any fruit that I leave on the ground like that, they tend to find. So this cantaloupe will be much happier climbing up this trellis. It will probably overtake it pretty easily, but at least it will give me a place to keep it up off the ground. I'm planting papalo. Not sure if I'm saying that right, but it is a heat loving type of cilantro. It has a similar flavor to cilantro, but it doesn't mind the heat. So a reader of my blog told me about this and so I ordered some seeds. As space opens up in the garden, I'm also planting more Chinese red noodles, more asparagus beans. They love our heat, do really well. When the ripe tomatoes start to pile up and I am not quite ready to use them, but I don't want them to go to waste, obviously, so I simply just store them in a freezer style Ziploc bag. Don't wash them or anything. Then when I'm ready to use them for salsa or tomato sauce or something like that, the skins just slip right off. Makes it really easy to use and these yummy tomatoes from the garden do not go to waste. On the menu tonight is roasted potatoes with thyme, rosemary and onions, all from the garden. If you haven't grown potatoes before, this is one vegetable that is worth growing just for the taste. Fresh harvested potatoes are so good. If I had to pick a favorite herb, it would definitely be thyme. I add it to so many dishes. Thyme grows pretty easily year round here in Arizona. If you don't have it growing in your garden, it is definitely worth adding some of this herb to your garden. As always, if you have questions or would like to see other things in videos, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.